DPNs, what's that? These are double pointed needles and they're made for knitting things in the round. And they're not as scary as they seem. Today, we're gonna work on an easy cast on and work up this fantastic fingerless mitt by Kristen Amidal. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. This is the fourth video in a series of how to read a pattern. Today, we'll concentrate on knitting in the round on double pointed needles. The other books range from a basic hat on straight needles, working a cable or twist, and lace knitting from a chart. Be sure and download the book by clicking on the link in the description below. Let's go over your supplies. Today's yarn is Lion Brand Landscapes. It's a medium four weight yarn. You need one skein. This is color Desert Spring. Thank you so much, Lion Brand. You are also going to need five inch double pointed needles, a set of five, size US eight or five millimeter. I'm actually using a US size 10 or six millimeter to make them big enough for these hands. You're also going to need a split ring marker, some scissors and a tapestry needle. And if you wanna measure out your gauge, you're going to need a measuring tape or a knitting gauge. Let's begin. The fingerless mitts pattern is an easy plus pattern. And of course, you know your supplies. Your gauge is uh, two repeats, which is eight stitches wide and 12 rounds, which is actually one and three quarters of an inch wide. The way you get that is you can work a small little swatch with 14 stitches across. It is worked in a flat panel, so you can test out some of the specialty stitches with that. We're not gonna make this swatch on camera here. I'm actually gonna dive right in and teach you how to cast on in the round. Let's flip over to the next page. Uh, this, this pattern starts on page 28 in the book or ebook. We'll flip over here and we start with the bottom ribbing section. So we do the cast on and I'll work one whole round with you to show you how to work all five needles. You see four needles used here, but you're always going to have a free fifth needle that stitches get loaded from one full needle over to the empty one and then it just keeps rotating. So that's kind of the basic premise around that. Then we will work the main stitch pattern, which is a four round repeat. And then you'll repeat that a certain number of times. And then we will work the first part of the thumb. And then we'll come to uh, binding off in pattern for the top of the ribbing. I'll give you some instruction in between so that you know uh, how the pattern is running. And then we'll come back and we'll pick up thumb stitches that we bound off before and show you how to complete that. So there's essentially six parts to this video. Be sure and click down below to find more information and uh, videos that are slower if you're missing some of these techniques in your um, own stitch vocabulary. All right, let's begin. So for casting on DPNs, you uh, generally use all of them that are spelled out in the pattern less one because one is going to be a free and empty one. So we just take whatever our stitches are and divide them among the three or the four that's called out in the pattern. In this case, we're doing five needles, so we're going to cast on four, uh, four needles and we're going to divide our stitches among those. This pattern is calling for 33. I'm actually going to do a cast on with just 32. You don't need that extra stitch for what I'm doing. We're going to um, put eight stitches on the first needle and we're using the long tail cast on which most people are familiar with. So go ahead and pull out your yarn. I'm doing about a yard and a half. I'm going to make my slip knot and then we'll just place that right on that needle and I'll have a video uh, slower if you are unfamiliar with the long tail cast on it'll be down below. We'll do the first couple of stitches together and then pause your video as you need. So we're going to make sure the tail is towards you and the ball is towards the back. Going to grab that with our opposite hand and split those two strands. We're going to scoop up through where the thumb part is. So scoop up here, go down where the finger is, and then down at the thumb and let it go. And we've got two stitches on our needle. We're going to go ahead and do that again, scoop up through the thumb, down through the finger, down at the thumb, and let it go. I've got three stitches on there. Go ahead and get uh, the rest of your stitches, eight for me. So four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. Now that you've got those on there, you can clearly see that there's a nice little ridge. And we're going to take advantage of that ridge, and this is going to help us in uh, casting on all of our stitches and then making it to where it doesn't twist, and you'll see that later on. So hold, go ahead and hold on to that, and with your free hand, pick up the next needle, 
and lay it right on that ridge and leave the yarn hanging at the back. So just hold on to it right there. Just grab those needles together. We're going to pick up our yarn just as we did before with the tail towards you still and cast on that first empty needle just like that using the tip. Slide it all the way to the back and kind of tug on that to make it nice and taut, nice and snug. And these stitches are now very close together. So the last stitch from our first needle and the first stitch from our second needle, you want nice and snug. Go ahead and do that again. All right, so now those first two stitches are nice and snug on there. And we're just going to keep holding on to both at the same time. This is very important. You can slide your hand down if you need to and finish casting on all eight of your stitches. And if you use a different yarn and needle, you need a different gauge, uh, just divide up however many stitches you need evenly and do those that many. Right, one more here. And I do have a roving yarn here and I did, I did frog this a little bit, so it's a little hairier than usual, so disregard that. <laughs> All right, so we've got um, eight on here and we wanna pick up the next needle, so just using our free hand, put the next one on this ridge here. I'm just gonna hold that in your other hand, just like the other ones, put it slightly forward and go ahead and cast on again. Make those first couple of stitches nice and snug making sure that we're not leaving a gap between the two needles. That's very important. We want to make sure those are nice and connected. Finish casting on, and then we'll do that on our last needle as well. So pause your video as you need. Slide that needle down if you need more room. And last needle. Keep holding on. Do not let them drop. Okay, so now that we have all of our stitches, we're gonna lay this down, and you can now cut this uh, this yarn here, the extra amount from your tail, just to about six inches or so. Okay, so now we're going to um, look at our stitches here before we move on. You have the very last stitch that you put on your needle, and then all the way down here is our very first stitch. We want to connect these two together. So we're going to swing all of these around in a circle so that they connect easily. And we just leave them on our table or your lap. It's easier on a flat surface. So you're going to take these top three needles and leave the bottom one right here without moving it. Just kind of put your hand down here and let these three needles swing around and put the tip of the needle right next to this over the needle that's not moving. So we're just going to swing these around like that, okay? And now we're not going to let the second needle move and we're going to start turning these. Notice how the tip is going on top of the needle that's not moving, okay? And now that you've got that one, we're just going to do the last one and continue turning. And now we have our very first stitch and our very last stitch together. Now we want to join those. So you're just gonna rotate this whole thing so they're closer to you. All right, so I've got my tail here, and this is my working yarn. Let me go ahead and put my working yarn at the back, so this is coming up through uh, the middle here. And we want to make sure that this first stitch and this one get connected. Go ahead and move your needle down a little bit so you can get that first point down here. And you can even these up by placing them right in the middle so they don't fall off and take your free needle, this is your fifth one, and we're gonna work this very first stitch and actually the second stitch while it's still laying here. And that will make these connect nice and snug without worry of these falling down. So we're gonna go into the very first stitch here, okay? And then we're going to knit it. Just take your working yarn and wrap around to knit that stitch and then pull a new stitch through and then let the old one drop off. And it's very important, go ahead and tug on this yarn nice and snug so that it's really connected with that uh, last stitch there. Go ahead and go into the next stitch and do the same thing again. Gonna knit that second stitch 
and make sure it's nice and snug. So now this is not going anywhere. We just lift it up off the table. You see all these little sticks here. <laughs> it looks a little bit of a mess, but really you want to just concentrate your attention on the two in hand. So the two needles in hand, you have your what was your free needle that all the new stitches are going to move on to and then what you have is the working needle that you have all the stitches that are you're working with right now so you want to finish out this row and you've already got this one connected let's go ahead and finish it so just knit that next stitch and knit the next one and you can keep going now for this particular pattern we're going to do a a rib stitch with a two by two so it's knit two purl two you can choose to knit the entire row first if you uh, prefer that or you can um, go ahead and knit two purl two I'm gonna go backwards and show you if you want to do the purl two next here so let's pull back we're gonna put once we've done our first two we're gonna put our yarn forward and purl two so yarn over and push that through to the back to purl and do it again put that yarn the yarn is in the front put our stitch in there or, 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 put our needle in the front of that stitch yarn over push through to the back and that's your purl stitch so we've got knit two purl two put our yarn to the back and continue that again you've got a knit two purl two and because the stitches are placed on there with eight it's really easy you just got two repeats of that pattern and you'll end on a purl two You see how I'm just concentrating on these other ones. I'm letting all these other needles just kind of fly around there. Okay, letting it go, and we have now an empty needle, okay? And you have this whole mess <laughs> right here. Uh, before we do anything else, I'm going to put this fifth needle down. I'm going to pick up my uh, stitch marker. I'm going to place it along this row, and you can put it towards the beginning of this needle, and that marks where the beginning of this round is. You can also tell from the, um, the tail that's hanging here, uh, but this is a nice visual that this entire needle is the first part of your round. Now, before you move on, you do not continue knitting with the one that we have in our hand here. You need to start using this fifth needle or the free needle. So if you were using um, only four double points, then you would have, um, this would be your fourth one. So we're gonna pick up the empty needle and move it right here and go on to the next one that's connected. So this is the next needle. We're gonna slide that down. And before I move on, I like to go ahead and put this needle right in the middle so that it's not gonna fall off and there's no stitches that are gonna fall off in between. So now I'm just gonna ignore this needle and put in my empty one into that very next stitch that occurs. So there's that next stitch. Put my yarn to the back because I was purling and ignore all the other needles and just knit that stitch. Go ahead and make sure that your uh, first and second stitch are nice and snug on there uh, so that the round is connected nicely. So knitting two. Okay, yarn forward and purl. And as you get used to knitting with double points, um, you'll it, it actually is easier than it looks. It seems like a lot in your hands, but once you get used to it, you um, your eyes tend to just focus on the two that you're working at, uh, working on at the same time. And the other ones really don't go anywhere. So knitting two, purling two, and you just continue rotating that um, that empty one around. So we'll do that again here in a second. Curling. Okay, we're rotating on to the next one. So when I move it around, I'm keeping the um, I'm keeping the right side towards me. This middle part here, I'm not working it from the back. You want to make sure and not work from the um, the inside here. You're working um, from the front. So this is the the right side here, and you can also tell from putting your stitch marker on there. All right, so we're going to pick up our free needle, put it into the next stitch, move these all down and continue working. Move that yarn to the back. And now we're just ignoring this other needle. Oops. There we go. 
Okay. Knit two, purl two, all the way around. Pause your video and I'll meet you back up if you need. I'm going to continue on this row so you can see it. You can look at your work like this and you can see that you've got one full round. None of the stitches are twisted and you are good to go to continue on. You can see that you're at the beginning of your round because of the tail, but also we've got this little stitch marker here and it's just important to continue to make sure and be snug with that first stitch. Uh, you want your, your ribbing to be nice and even. So continue with round two through 11, just the same as round one uh, and making that knit purl, knit purl and you're going to make this little cuff here and then when we get back we'll start working on the body of the stitch with this uh, PSSO 3 on here all right pause your video and I will see you in a moment the next part of the pattern has the major stitch pattern and it looks like these big yarn overs here but what it is is a PSSO 3 and all over this book you see really pretty stitch guides showing you exactly how do you need to work the needles and these big arrows here and um, there's also different figures on different pages that you can see and even some videos that are available. So I want to point out that throughout the book, there are several of these in here. Let's go over that now in the main body of the pattern. All right, we're ready for the body. I've got my ribbed cuff going on right here, and we're going to work on this section right here. These rounds, one through four, uh, make up your main stitch pattern. So let's work round one and two and all those two rounds are doing is just knitting across all the stitches so go ahead and do two rounds knitting that's it all right pause your video and i'll meet you back up all right round three we're going to be reducing the amount of stitches by eight so you've got 32 in the round and we're going to be taking two stitches off each needle we're going to slip as if to knit this first one and then we knit three, so one, two, and three. And then you're going to take that stitch that you had slipped before and just pass it over these three stitches. And then it puts this really big stitch in front and that is your slip stitch. So that's PSSO three. And then you just continue that on. You're going to slip as if to knit, just one stitch and then knit until uh, your stitches, there's no more left. Okay, one, two, and three. And then pass that stitch over that you slipped all the way over, and you're just gonna rotate it and go on to the next one, repeating across. Slip as if to knit, knit three, pass the slip stitch over those three. So one, two, three, pass a slip stitch over, slip one, knit three, two, three, 
and pass that slip stitch over. A little tight. There we go. And you're just going to continue on around and you'll have 24 stitches when you finish your round. Pause your video. I'll meet you back up for round four. Round four, you have made these um, PSSOs here and now we want to increase our stitches back to 32. So we've got them down to 24. See that right there? And now we want to increase. So we're going to put yarn overs in. Take your empty needle for this very first stitch. It is a yarn over. And then we're going to just yarn over that empty needle and then insert it into our first stitch on this next needle. And when you wrap around, it locks in and creates that extra stitch there. And you're just going to knit those three. So that's, you have to knit one, two, three, then yarn over, just wrap that needle and then knit three, one, two, and three. And then turn, and with the empty needle, do the same thing again. Just put it right in front of that next needle, yarn over, insert in, yarn over, and knit that stitch. And just continue around until you have the 32 stitches. You're at the beginning of the round. Pause your video, and I'll meet you back. Now that you've completed the first four rounds, you can see your PSSO hanging out here and you've got your little yarn overs just waiting for the next rounds. So you're going to work rounds five through 20, just like you did rounds one through four and you're just repeating it four times. So you've already done this part of the mitt and then you're, you've, so you got one of these PSSOs and you're gonna do one, two, three, four more, and I'll meet you back right here where this thumb area is. Let's uh, start this round together just so you can see. We've got this yarn over hanging out here, so that's not a mistake. Remember, you're gonna wanna work that so that you still have the 32 stitches. So just knit that as normal, just a regular knit stitch. It will be a little loose right now, and that's okay. And then knit those three, one, two, three. And then you've got that next, um, let's see, oh, there's that third one, sorry, three. And then there's that next yarn over, knit that, and then just continue across. So rounds one through two are making uh, the knit stitch, okay, which makes it build up. And then you've got the round where we're reducing, doing the PSSO, and then we're increasing, okay? So knitting two rounds, decreasing, and then increasing. Repeat rounds uh, one through four, uh, four more times, and I'll meet you back at this thumb hole. See you soon. All right, so we've got rounds um, five through 20 up to this point, and now we need to work the next four rounds, 21 through 24, to get to here. But what's significant here is we need to bind off some stitches and allow for this thumb hole opening. Now we're not making the thumb part just yet, but we need to make sure that the inside here will allow a thumb to go through. So first thing is we're going to bind off the first four stitches on here. Now you have six stitches, uh, I'm sorry, you have, um, eight stitches across. Now two of them are yarn overs, so it may look a little bit different. Uh, let's go ahead and bind off all four of these together, and then you're gonna work the rest of the round just knitting. So we're gonna knit that first yarn over, and knit the second one, and then to bind off, you just lift up and over for that first one, and pass that over, and then knit the next one. And it may help to count them as you go, so we bound off one, this is two, three, and four, which is this yarn over here. So technically you've worked with five stitches, but the amount that you've um, bound off is uh, less. So now I've got um, the four across and you should have um, four total for this row because you had eight before. So we've got one, two, three, and then you've got this fourth one here. So just continue knitting across this whole round and um, you're actually gonna do that um, uh, yeah, so just complete round 21 and you'll have 28 stitches at the end of it. Uh, pause your video and I'll meet, meet you back up for round 22. See you soon. All right, round 22, this is where we've got those bound off stitches. We're on the beginning of our round and we're going to yarn over twice here. So just put your needle here as you've done before with just one yarn over, except we're going to do it twice. So wrap it twice. It puts two stitches on here and then knit the next stitch. So you're going to knit across this entire round 
um, all stitches are knit. So you only have 30 stitches on here because we're only adding two more to this particular needle and all the other needles will have eight. So continue knitting this round, pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. For round 23, we're gonna start by slipping the first part of this yarn over off and we're going to knit front and back twice into this big loop here. So stick your um, free needle into that loop and yarn over to knit and pull up that stitch. And we're gonna work in the back of this loop back here. Just kind of put the needle back there and yarn over and pull up a loop, okay? And now we're going to um, go back into this same stitch here. So that's once. We're gonna knit the stitch, yarn over, I mean, uh, pull that stitch up and go to the back of that loop again and yarn over and pull up a stitch. So we actually have four loops on our needle and then let that other one fall off. Stick your um, free needle into that loop and yarn over to knit and pull up that stitch. And we're gonna work in the back of this loop, back here, just kind of put the needle back there. and yarn over and pull up a loop. And now we're going to um, go back into this same stitch here. So that's once. We're gonna knit the stitch. Pull that stitch up and Go to the back of that loop again and yarn over and pull up a stitch. So we actually have four loops on our needle and then let that other one fall off. And then we want to go to the next stitch and we're going to slip as if to knit and then knit these last three stitches and we're doing that PSSO3. So we're gonna knit one, two, three, and then lift that first stitch up and over. And the rest of this is just like when you do a round, um, a round three that you did earlier, okay? So you're just gonna continue by slipping one and knitting three PSSO3 for the remainder of uh, this round. All right, pause your video and I will meet you back up uh, for the next round, round 24. See you soon. For round 24 starts, you should have completed and had 25 stitches. So double check all your numbers and make sure you have 25 stitches around your needles. Uh, this first one will have uh, seven on it. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, five, six, seven, and the rest of them have six needles. The first four stitches on round 24 are knit. Just knit those first four. One, two, three, four. And then um, for the remainder of the round, you're just gonna do like you did originally in round four, which is um, yarn over and then knit three. And then you just repeat all the way around. Okay. So for round 24, just continue uh, working that way. And then rounds 25 through 30, you're gonna repeat rounds one through four once more, and then rounds one and two once more. So you'll end with uh, two more rounds of knitting. And then you'll move on to a top ribbing section. So you're going to um, complete, um, you've just completed this part here, and you're gonna do one more, and then finish with two rounds of the knitting, and then you're gonna work um, rounds one through six and doing the top ribbing. Go ahead and pause your video and meet me back up when you get to this section here and we will bind off in pattern and then later we're going to work the thumb area for you. All right, see you soon. All right, so we've worked our um, our remaining rounds here and we're, we've done our top ribbing one through six and now we need to bind off all stitches loosely in ribbing. Another way to say that is to bind off in pattern and that's when you knit the knits and purl the purls. Let's do that together. All right, we're gonna bind off all these stitches loosely. Go ahead and knit the first two and lift the first one up and over the second 
And when you get onto the third stitch, put your yarn forward and you're gonna purl because that is a purl stitch. We're gonna purl the pearls and put our yarn to the back again and lift up and over. You can leave this yarn forward because the next stitch is a purl, but I like moving the yarn out of the way. Um, it's just easier for me to do. Uh, I move the yarn out of the way and lift up and over. And I'm not pulling extra tight on this. I want uh, there to be a generous opening. And now that I have my yarn to the back, I'm gonna go ahead and knit the next stitch, lift up and over, knit the next stitch, lift up and over, that binds that off. And then the next two stitches are purl. Find that off. Oop, dropped one. And then purl that stitch. All right, lift up and over. Okay, and then you've got this needle that you don't need to do anything with, so it's done for the moment. Set it aside and put the yarn to the back. And then when you move on to the next needle, you're going to knit this stitch. And now you can bind off that last stitch from the last um, eight stitches. So now you bound that off. Go to the next one, knit. And lift over. And now we're gonna purl. And you just continue just like that. And you can see how it's nice and uh, even and retains that stretchy and looseness. And we'll just go all the way around. Uh, pause your video. I'll meet you back up for the end here. And uh, we'll work on the thumb hole section together. See you soon. All right, we've come to the end. I've gone ahead and clipped my yarn. I'm just going to yarn over and pull through one more. Last stitch. And then now we can connect these two pieces here just with a tapestry needle. going to come through these two stitches in this little chain here from the inside out like that and then I'm going to come through these two from where it ended these two here and I'm going to make a chain so it draws it in and makes a little chain right here and then that completes that I'm going to come over here and now I can just weave in into the back of this ribbing here. All right, so finish weaving in your tail here, weave in this tail here, and then when we meet back up, we're going to work on the thumb. For the thumb section, with the right side facing, pick up 12 stitches evenly spaced around the thumb opening. So I've bent this so you can see where my thumb opening is right here. And we're going to be picking up stitches evenly around to shape this thumb here. Um, there is a really nice clean figure on page 47 and you can see that in, when you have this book. And it's also got some more... Um, some more tips for you, including using a crochet hook if you're having a hard time pulling through some of those stitches. And then you're going to place three stitches on each of the four needles and we'll work all the way around in the ribbing just as you've done before and bind off and pattern uh, loosely in the ribbing just as we did before. But right now let's just pick up these stitches and you'll be able to get the rest of it. I'm going to come up to here and you see how around this opening we have a couple of yarn overs Avoid those areas as much as possible and you want to pick up stitches along where you can get through two stitches. So you want to go underneath and pick up a stitch um, like that. So grab your yarn and then you're going to pull up a stitch and this first one might be easier with a crochet hook. And see I'm kind of bending it back and I can get it. But let's look what it looks like with a crochet hook. So I'm going to put my hook right underneath this V-stitch. It's kind of shaped like that. A little chain. And just pull it right on up okay and then you can put it on your needle okay you can leave a nice long tail that you can sew in that later if it's uh, easier and now we're going to go through the next one and pick up another stitch and that's a little tighter so i'm just going to hold that to the side and we'll use our crochet hook here and then yarn over and pull through that's a little bit easier and then we can just leave that loose pick that up with our needle and move on to the next one. Yarn over 
and pull up a loop here and put that through our needle. Okay, and now I've got three on this needle. We're going to just drop it and go on to the next needle and just keep working our way around. And you want to make sure that you are definitely not on one of those yarn overs. You want to make sure that it's a nice, uh, firm connection here. Okay, so I'm going to keep rotating and turning around. We're not going to go on the inside. Um, all right, so I've got a yarn over here. Before I get to the yarn over, let me go through this stitch here next to it. Pull one up. And we'll put that in our next needle and then skip this big yarn over area here and in fact yeah here we go go through these two stitches pull up a loop place it on our needle and move on to the next one That's that one. And then I'm going to go through this one. Just make sure you got two stitches on top of it and place it. All right, so I've got half of my stitches one, two, three, one, two, three. Moving on. And I can go ahead and tuck this little strand down in here. And then you can weave that in afterward and just get it out of the way. Go ahead and pick up three more. And then I have this other yarn over here, and then there's uh, a stitch down here. I can go ahead and just pick those up and work, work those together, just as long as it's got another stitch with it. Just one, two stitches, pull that up. I normally don't use a crochet hook, but this is actually much easier for me. Okay, keep turning. Find another pair of stitches. There we go. Okay, and it's a little tight. I'm just gonna keep rotating around, grabbing our, our last needle, and we wanna get three stitches in here. One, two, pull up, loop. Place that on there. And then right where I had had my first bind off stitches here, I've actually got two more loops that I can go under. It looks like the beginning chain of that one. So that works out really well. And then place that on my needles. And yes, it is a very tight little space for your thumb hole. <laughs> and we know that this is the beginning of our round. So I'm going to go ahead and take my um, little stitch marker off and put it right here. So I know that this is the beginning of my round. Okay. Got my working yarn coming out from here. It's a great way to tell. And just pick up your fifth needle. And remember, just ignore the ones you're not working with. So I'm only working with this empty one and then this one here. And we're just going to knit two and then purl two. And that first stitch is really loose. So I'm going to come back up in here and grab that tail kind of tug on it. That's that tail from the beginning. And then now we're going to purl two. So you'll have to kind of talk your way through this one because one of the pearls is on this needle and then the next one is on the next needle. And there's my purl two. And then the next two stitches are knit 
and I had this uh, seated the wrong way. If you see how I have it this way, we want the leg of the stitch with the right side over the needle to insert it the correct way or else that stitch is going to get twisted. So we just situate it correctly and this one I need to do that too. It's I think it's easier when you're picking up the stitches just to fix it afterwards. So we're just going to knit this one and then go on to the next. And it's seated the wrong way, so I'm going to fix it before I move on. There we go. And this one is pearl. Oops. Golly, I'm getting this all messed up. Okay, yarn forward. Put the, the needle into pearl. Pearl that stitch. So pearl. Uh, I'm going to twist this one around. Pearl. And knit one and I've dropped it so hold on it just barely fell out so I'm gonna pick these stitches up here this should be fine there we go and then the last stitches are see I just knit that one and then I have a knit And then two pearl. The first row is obviously it's a lot more fiddly. Uh, so once I get this round done, uh, I will continue on. And then we have three more rounds. So it's actually rounds one through four is ribbing. Okay. So rounds one through four are ribbing, um, knit two, purl two, and then bind off all the stitches in the round just like we did up here, and then you will be finished with it. So I'll pause my video, we'll come back and we'll have both of them done. Well, here are my final mitts. Aren't they so cute with the completed thumb hole? I just adore them. I think my sister's gonna love these. And if you wanna try this with circular needles, you can totally do that, or even use two circulars next to each other and working this as well. So there's multiple ways to knitting in the round. Be sure and pick up your beginner's guide to knitting in the round. Thank you so much to Leisure Arts for your permission and pattern reading and this opportunity to learn. Be sure and check out our videos. We have a new one every week. Subscribe to our channel and send us pictures on Instagram at Good Knit Kisses, and uh, we'd love to feature them. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.